Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. Check it out at carsandbids.com. This is the SCG Boot, and it's one of the coolest off-road vehicles ever created by anybody, anywhere, ever. You may have never heard of this car, you may have never heard of this company, but this thing is insane. It's a street-legal desert racer with a 650 horsepower supercharged V8 and a price tag of around $300,000. Today, I'm going to review the Boot and show you all of its quirks and features. All right, time for the quirks and features of the SCG Boot. And I'm going to start by answering a question that I'm sure you're thinking, which is, what is this thing? So let's start with an explanation of SCG. You can see the logo right here. It's a small car company from New York, which is why you have the Statue of Liberty torch in the center of the logo. S stands for Scuderia, which is Italian for stable or team, like Scuderia Ferrari. C is is Meg Cameron, the wife of G. Jim Glickenhaus, who's become well known in the car community for various interesting endeavors, starting with the Ferrari P45, which was like a rebodied Enzo intending to look like the old school Ferrari P4 race car. He commissioned that vehicle, it was designed by Pininfarina, one of one just for him, and then Jim Glickenhaus decided to go racing. He created his own line of race cars, designed and built from the ground up by his company SCG and they've seen decent success at Le Mans at Nürburgring in real races competing against factory designed and in some cases factory backed racing cars. And then came the boot. Jim Glickenhaus had been in the movie industry before and so he purchased movie memorabilia including the original 1967 Baja boot that was campaigned by Steve McQueen at one of the original Baja Baja off-road races. Glickenhaus had the old school boot sitting in his collection and the story goes one day he looked at it and thought, why don't we make a modern interpretation of this? And so the boot was born. A complete 180 from all of the SCG race cars, a totally different thing, but still special and cool and custom and awesome. So, on to the basics of the boot. Obviously an off-road vehicle, it's built on a custom tube frame chassis and it was intended to be a serious off-road race car. In fact, the boot won its class at the Baja 1000 against the Ford Bronco. This small-time company with this ridiculous vehicle beat out Ford and the Bronco at the Baja 1000. So, it's a serious off-road race vehicle that can desert run at high speeds, but it's also street legal. In fact, when the boot won its class at Baja, it was driven there from the shop in California that builds it all the way down through Mexico to the race. It raced, it won, and then it was <laughs> driven right back to the shop. So it's a serious desert racer, but also a street legal vehicle that you can drive around. As you might imagine, the boot has four-wheel drive, and this version, being a road model as opposed to a race model, has 37-inch tires. The racing version has 40-inch tires, absolutely massive. These, of course, are pretty huge themselves. But what's more impressive about the boot is the powertrain, which is mounted in the back. The LT4 V8 from Chevy. That's the 6.2-liter supercharged V8 that was in the Chevy Camaro Z one and the Cadillac CTS-V. It has 650 horsepower, a massive figure for those sports cars, and of course a massive figure for a desert runner off-road vehicle, the boot. So let's start going through the quirks and features, and we'll start back here with the engine, where one interesting quirk is that all of the fluid caps are exposed on the outside of the boot. You can see over on this side, this cap up here is for some 
some sort of fluid. Same deal over on the other side. There's fluid caps, reservoirs where you can add this. Obviously, this is an intentional design made so race teams on a crew can easily access engine fluids when you're desert running at high speeds. You come in for a pit stop and you can quickly top up whatever needs, well, topping. You can also see back here massive exhaust mounted in this fantastic spot on the rear sides. They look like rocket boosters and really help to give the boot a totally crazy appearance. And I absolutely <laughs> love it. It just looks so cool. Even cooler than that, though, but not quite as obvious, is the air intake, which comes in over the passenger compartment. You can see it here. This is the air intake, delivers air to the LT4 going over the roof and into the engine. You can see how it works. Now, the interesting thing is the boot has a sunroof, but also an air intake. How does that work? Well, on top of the roof, there's a piece of glass. And then on top of the air intake, there's another piece of glass. So double glass in here still gives you a light, airy, open cockpit, but it also gives you the functionality of an air intake. Pretty crazy to see that. Most cars with an air intake, the roof is well, the air intake, not also a sunroof. Now, also cool and quirky on the outside, you have these little circles mounted next to the passenger compartment. The upper two are gauges, fuel gauge to show how much fuel is left and an oil gauge to show how much oil there is. This makes it easy for a crew to see in an off-road race whether fuel or oil needs to be added during a pit stop. The lowest circle here shows the vehicle number. This is boot number four, and this circle is rimmed in lights that can change color, which helps identify the various boots on a race course. The red one is coming in, the blue one is here. It makes it a little easier, especially at night, to see which boot you're looking at. Also interesting back here, as you've probably seen, there is a massive spare tire mounted on the back. Like I said, a 37-inch tire on the road-going boot, and that includes the wheel. Wouldn't really want to take that off. It's probably tremendously heavy, but it's there if you need it. And of course, the racing boot has an even larger tire, even heavier, to stick on in racing situations. But it's nice to have a spare in a vehicle like this. Now, speaking of massive stuff, the boot itself is pretty massive. It weighs around 5,500 pounds. And when you combine that weight with this rather unaerodynamic shape and a massive supercharged V8, you get about eight miles per gallon. Maybe you can get up to 10 if you really feather it, but you're not going to be getting great fuel mileage in the boot. That's not really the point, as you've probably figured out. And next up, we move up front in the boot. We have more interesting items, starting with a winch, which is obviously an important feature in a desert running off-road race vehicle. And of course, you have some pretty insane suspension. You can look kind of through the front end, front fender situation and see your Fox racing shocks and some crazy heavy duty suspension components that allow this vehicle up to 19 inches of suspension travel, which is obviously absolutely ridiculous, but useful in an off-road race car like the boot. Now, you can also see some kind of unpainted, unfinished components in here, and that is by design. SCG leaves this stuff in sort of its most stripped-down basic look in case they have to perform roadside repairs, like do a quick weld while they're desert running at high speeds. That kind of stuff happens, so they figured there's no point in painting it, making it look pretty, because it might break on a race course and have to be fixed quickly. And by the way, speaking of the suspension, just in case you're curious about the numbers, the boot has 48 degrees of front approach angle, 47 degrees of rear departure angle, and an amazing 14 inches of ground clearance. All pretty impressive stuff. But I also want to point out on the outside another great item, the roof basket, which really helps to give this that off-road overlanding flare, and it can be accessed by this ladder going up the side, which also helps to make it just look like it's capable of anything. You can climb up on top of this alien-looking off-road creature. 
And next up, we climb inside the boot, where, as you might imagine, there is oh so much more to discuss, starting with opening the door. And the door is actually an interesting thing because, as you can see, this is a two-door boot, but future boot models will have four doors, like this rendering here. Now, apparently, SCG has made five of these two-door boot models in racing or road configurations like this one, but they're currently developing the four-door model, and they hope to have it out sometime next year. And going forward, all boot models will be the four-door version. SCG can still potentially make a two-door custom model if someone really wants it, but for customer demand, practicality, and safety reasons, the four-door version makes more sense, and so that's where boot production is headed going forward. The two doors will be special, limited production before the more common four-door arrives. As for pricing, the four-door boot models are reportedly going to cost around $280,000 base price before options, and of course adding stuff will increase the price from there. But anyway, back to the doors themselves. You go to open it, you can see this door handle borrowed from a Ford Super Duty pickup. This rear view mirror borrowed from a Jeep Wrangler. Stuff like this is difficult for small volume automakers like SCG to create, so it's easier to just buy off-the-shelf stuff that already exists from other automakers. But you open the door and you enter the interior and you discover, well, it's not as stripped out race car as you might expect. This isn't some crazy high-end luxury vehicle to be sure, but you do have leather seats with some stitching and Alcantara seat centers and you got some leather and stitching on the dashboard. It's not as race car focused in here as you might expect. No roll cage, no race harnesses, not difficult to climb climb over stuff to get inside, and that's because this is the road version of the boot. The race model does have a roll cage inside, it does have harnesses, and it is more difficult to climb inside, but the road version, this car, is more comfortable, more tranquil. Again, no one would call it a luxury car, but it doesn't have some of the compromises you're forced to deal with in a racing vehicle. So let's talk through the details of all the quirks and features in here, starting with the key. You can see the key itself is a generic Ford key because it has to open the lock on the Ford Super Duty door handles, but once you get inside, there's nowhere to stick a key in and twist it. Instead, it's a proximity key. It senses that you're in here and you start the car with a button, although the procedure is a little more complicated than that. First, you got to turn on the battery. There's this switch behind the seats in between them. You flip it to well, the on position and then the boot is ready to be fired up. With the proximity key inside it, you press ignition key here in the center console and then press start and then the V8 roars to life and you can drive your boot. Now, once the boot is running, there is much to see in this interior, and we'll start with the displays. They don't turn on automatically when you start the car. Instead, you have to press the display button here in the center control stack, and that fires up all three interior screens. The one directly in front of the driver is a Motec racing gauge cluster, pretty commonly seen in race cars, and it shows you all the basic important information. Obviously, your speed is on here, but also stuff like oil temperature, oil pressure, things you might Need while you're out racing to focus on key performance indicators of the vehicle to make sure it's not about to blow up. Now in the middle you have a touchscreen that has Bluetooth and also other normal vehicle convenience features you might expect. You can play music through the speakers, that kind of thing. Apparently the racing boot has another Motec racing gauge cluster here so the passenger can keep an eye on various vehicle systems in addition to the driver, but in the road car you get Bluetooth you get navigation. It's like a regular car, except it certainly isn't. <laughs> Now, over on the passenger side, you have another screen, no dashboard in here. Instead, it's an off-road GPS. And apparently when you're starting an off-road race, they give you a SIM card or an SD card with the race map loaded onto it. You plug it into your off-road GPS, and then you go, go, go. 
<laughs> and so those are the screens and the dashboard of the boot. As for the dashboard itself, it has kind of a distinctive shape with these smaller climate vents, rectangles on the outside, circles in the middle. This is a custom design dashboard built specific for this car. And aside from a few shared parts like I already showed you, most of the stuff in here is custom. But moving further down on the dashboard, you have this whole array of buttons in the center control stack. And frankly, their functions are pretty self-explanatory looking at them. You get the diff lock here, the fan, the horn, your hazard lights, winch, your headlights, low and high beams, all your basic stuff, as you can imagine, is right here in the center control stack. Going further below that, you have your power window controls, driver and passenger side up and down, and then some more winch controls in here. And further below that, you have dials to adjust your climate control. Yes, the boot has air conditioning. Again, the road going model, very luxurious, very comfortable, and it's kind of nice in here, actually, with the luxuries of climate control. But moving further down in this center area, you can see the gear lever, which at first glance looks like a manual, but it isn't. All the boots have a four-speed automatic transmission, obviously an automatic, probably easier for high-speed desert running. You're not worrying about shifting your gears, although the race versions of the boot do have a shiftable automatic, but of course with no clutch pedal. Now, next to the gear selector, you can see a lever rising up out of the center, and that controls two-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive. You want to go into four-wheel drive, of course, you pull the lever down, as you can see in the diagram, and then you're in four-wheel drive. There's also a switch here that's labeled fire. If you pull that, a fire suppression system that's installed in the vehicle will spit out foam to try to quell any fire that has developed. Apparently, the off-road racing version of the boot has a more substantial, serious fire suppression system, but the road car still has one, and you definitely don't want to pull that unless you need to. Also here in the center console, you can see cup holders, a nice luxurious touch, and a center armrest, which of course doubles as a center console storage lid lifted up and well, you can store stuff in there. Anyway, next up, moving around the interior to the steering wheel, where you can see a pretty basic racing wheel with, in the center, again, the Statue of Liberty torch, which has come to be the emblem for SCG, the company, and it looks cool in there. Also, around the steering wheel, you can see the stocks, which, once again, are borrowed. These come from General Motors, the turn signal stock, and the wiper stock, again, just cheaper and easier for small manufacturers like this to take existing parts like these in instead of creating their own. Next up, another interesting item in this interior, as I mentioned before, the sunroof. A large open paneled sunroof that, yes, is directly below the air intake, and it gives people a pretty good view out and keeps the cabin kind of lighter and more open feeling than it would if it was just completely dark and covered on top. It's nice to have that in here, and again, adds a little bit to the luxurious air of this interior. Also mounted up high, sun visors. And these are no ordinary sun visors. In fact, they're incredibly hard to get down and to get back up. Apparently, this is standard in desert runner off-road vehicles because when you're out in the desert, you want the sun to be blocked from your eyes, but you don't want the visor flopping around everywhere because you're going over bumps at high speed. So the visor stays very much where you put it, and it's difficult to open or close, not like usual car sun visors. But also interesting, you can see there is no rear view mirror. You got like a spot for one, probably because this windshield is borrowed from a relatively normal vehicle, but there's no mirror on it. And that makes sense because the air intake takes up the entire back window. So even if you had a mirror, you wouldn't be able to see anything behind you. You'll have to rely on the side view mirrors, the Jeep Wrangler ones, and of course the accelerator pedal. If you're worried someone's behind you for a lane change, just floor it. You'll get ahead of them and it won't really be a problem. <laughs> Worth pointing out though that when you shift into reverse, there is a backup camera in the boot. So if you're going at low speeds backing up, you can see what's behind you, even though you don't have a rear view mirror. Also interesting in this interior, to the left of the steering wheel, you have this little switch which controls the parking brake. Flip the switch to the right and the parking brake is on. Flip the switch to the left and the parking brake turns off. Pretty simple, but that's how it's done in the boot. All right, driving the boot. <laughs> This thing is so cool. I remember when it was first announced, I was thinking, what? That that's going to exist? And now it does, and now I'm driving it. So, first impressions. It is big, 
It is heavy. I mean, it is as described, 5,500 pounds and a serious off-road creature. Now this boot is very specifically a pre-production prototype model. They never really went into production with the two-door cars. They just realized the four-door was kind of the one to do. So they made a few of these for those prototypes and now we're off to the races. So how is this thing to drive? Well, like I said, it's big. Oh man, this is so cool. You hear the roar of this giant engine behind you. You just feel so powerful in this. You're looking out over this, this front end. Oh, rrr. Now, of course, everybody looks at you when you're driving this, which I guess isn't really a big surprise. Should probably have expected that. It's a totally crazy thing to be driving around in. God, the suspension travel situation is just wild. You go over anything, and I mean, you feel stuff, but you just get the sense that you can go over anything and do anything. Now, there's no brake booster, so stopping requires a deep stab of the brake pedal, which is fine, of course, but you got to kind of keep that in mind. Steering is one-to-one -one ratio, so it actually steers quite well, considering it's a massive creature. But, of course, handling is slow because it's a massive creature. But steering, I mean, it's kind of cool. You move the wheel and there you go. You're going in that direction. It takes a pretty deep stab of the throttle to get going. You got to do some real accelerating. Oh. Man, this thing is just plain cool. You feel like you're ready for the apocalypse and you could go over anything or do anything. It is so the feeling of being behind the wheel in this is so cool. I have driven everything, even everything in this segment. I drove the Local Motors Rally Fighter, which sort of feels like this. I've driven every Raptor and TRX and all that. This is on such a totally different level that it's almost hard to explain. It is just so massive and so like serious and so brutish. It just feels like Arr, at all points you're feeling that. It's not as fast as you might think considering 650 horsepower because you're dealing with a four-speed automatic transmission with a torque converter that kind of dumps things down and of course a giant vehicle 5,500 pounds. So you got to really put some throttle in it to get going but even then you can only go down so many gears to make this engine really move and so you're kind of at the mercy of that and at the car's weight. All right, let's give it some juice here, see what happens. Woo <laughs> yeah, it's not incredibly fast. That's not really what it's about. Boy, does it squat down and that front end comes up though, I'll tell you. But it's not incredibly fast. It's fast enough, like it moves for sure and it makes a lot of sound, but speed isn't the forte. God, it just feels so bulky and brawny and substantial. Urgh. I can't imagine what you could do if you could really get on it and take it out into the desert and go off-roading on some serious trails. Really, you feel like you can... Urgh. You're the, the mo coolest, most insane, most excessive guy on the road in this car. You just are. And what a feeling it is. Just driving around a normal town center here in Mount Kisco, New York. No problem. Honda Fit, Volkswagen Tiguan, boot. I am in love. I think this is so neat and absurd in the most wonderful way. And surprisingly civilized. Like it makes a lot of sound. So you kind of hear a lot, especially the engine, the suspension, that sort of thing. But it's like relatively comfortable, relatively drivable. You can use it. I would drive this around town if I was insane. Fuel economy is going to be one of your big issues and the brake situation because there's no brake booster. It's really a deep stab of the pedal. But other than that, it's a pretty drivable car. I'm now going like nine miles an hour. There's a school bus ahead of me here in Mount Kisco. <laughs> I'm going to stop to let a guy cross the street. He's looking at me like, what is this thing waiting for me? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of S-classes and Grand Cherokees and minivans out here. You know, you don't, you don't see, you don't see a lot of absurdity. But this, this is exactly that absurd, and I love it. And so that's the SCG boot, which is an absolutely ridiculous off-road sports car of sorts. It is absurd and wonderful in all the right ways. And now it's time to give the boot a Doug score. 
And the Doug score is here, 58 out of 100, which puts the SCG boot here against some other crazy SUVs and off-roaders. The boot finishes in the middle of this pack, but it's important to note that it has a higher weekend score than any vehicle here. Higher than the G63 AMG 6x6. Higher than the Hummer H1 Alpha. Higher than the Lamborghini LM002. But the boot is, indeed, mostly a performance and fun vehicle. It's not that realistic as a usable daily driver for basically anyone, unless your commute is the Himalayas. But as a performance vehicle, it might just be the coolest off-roader of all time.